So <laughs> let me access this as testosterone, then I will uh, do the basically the the same thing that you will see, because uh, as far as the myopometh is concerned, the testosterone is a real student. Um, the exact screens that you see here is the uh, screen that you will see when you attempt. And um, so it's, you know, time limited, 10 minutes. With the multiple choice, I give you three attempts. And I, I for my other classes, I used to give two attempts, saying, you know, if you have any technical issues, that's what the first attempt is for. You know, the second attempt is there in case of technical issues. With the physics uh, 4C uh, and also 4A, I made this uh, three attempts because um, 10 minutes is really a tight amount of time. So even for me, uh, it is going to be tight amount of time. So um, that's really why the third attempt is there, because I'm recognizing that 10 minutes is not a lot of time uh, for 10 questions. But I think it will work out OK. And this will be a kind of a chance to see in real time if I can do these 10 questions in 10 minutes and um, and <laughs> Hopefully, not miss any. We'll see. Okay, let me start. Has a time limit, warns you. So I'm gonna start. Okay, 206. So I have to watch the clock and make sure I finish everything be well before 217 or so. So, yeah, these are the exact same ones. So you shouldn't be wasting your time reading through this. You should have read it before you started. Okay, so concert glass pane, angle at which our ray strikes the glass pane on one side. Oh, when is that not the same as angle? Um, I think it's a never. It's a, always the same angle. Oh, wow, this is a confusing question. <laughs> okay, I want to say never, but I'm noticing the double negative, which is bad grammar. Um, <laughs> Yeah, because with the glass pane, it's a, you know, it's a thin material. So on the other side, it returns to the same uh, angle that it came in at. Um, I hate that this is a grammar question. Um, let me answer all... No, let me answer never. And I might um, consider going back and actually fixing this question after I'm done. <laughs> so let me answer never for now, and I'll hunt down this question and fix it. Oh, by the way, oh, let me demonstrate this. So if you see issue like this, use this. And uh, don't fill this out while you are doing the question, but come back to it after you are done. And then uh, let me know of the issue. I think this is an actual uh, question wording issue. If something like this comes up, use this, send me a message. I'll look at it, address it, make sure no one's losing points unfairly. And <laughs> I'll actually do that right after I'm done here. Uh, okay, let me move on to question two. Okay, index of refraction. I'm gonna just uh, answer this as quickly as I can without uh, further explanation. So that should be the mantissa, 2.26, 2. Yeah, and the power of 10 is the same for all of them. All right, I got to catch up in time. Uh, refracting light ray is bending away from perpendicular. So that should mean index of refraction is decreasing. You can look at Snell's law to confirm that's how it works. Uh, going to speed up because I'm already out of time. So. Yeah, light ray traveling obliquely to the axis of a thin converging lens strikes the lens at the intersection of the lens and the axis. That means it's striking the lens at the middle of it. So uh, this is the second principal ray. So it should go through the lens undeflected. So it should be on the other side without being deflected from the instant ray. Yeah. And that's the con and thin part is it's also not offset. If it's a thick lens, then it would be offset a little bit. Um, yeah, traveling, yeah, okay. Image formed by a single biconvex, so that's concave, not concave, that's the converging lens. Um, so with a converging lens, it's not always virtual. You can form a real image. Um, it's not always real. It can be uh, virtual. Oh, uh, is it none of the above? 
yeah, here I think the wording is right because none of the above the choices are right. <laughs> so the only correct choice is the bottom. <laughs> um, what type of lens is needed for eyeglasses meant for correcting vision of a far-sighted person? Okay, so this is someone who can see things that are infinitely far away but has trouble focusing on things that are nearby. So uh, for correcting that, you need a converging lens um, to form a virtual image that's farther away than the object. So it's this one. I think it's an old person lens, reading glasses, as they say. Um, I mean, typically, you know, they also wear bifocals and whatnot. I mean, like, get distracted, I only have, what, uh, five minutes? Oh, by the way, one thing that I want people to know is uh, this is often useful, especially towards the end, um, especially if you have a bad internet connection. As long as your work is saved, when you run out of time, um, this thing can do something with a saved work, but when it's not saved, that's when you can get into an issue. Okay. Um, if the two solitaire... <sighs> All right, so this is a calculation question, so I'm going to skip for now. I'll come back <laughs> after I know I have more time. Uh, this is another calculation question, so I'll come back. Um, this is another calculation question, so I'll come back. Okay, uh, diffraction grading is used. Okay, if you want it to increase, oh, I think there's a lecture on that. Um, there's a uh, there's a lecture on that. I think it, it's part of this week stuff. Um, what it should be is so you need a more number of slits um, that'll, especially if you are keeping the pacing between the slits the same. It basically means a bigger grading and it um, increases the power of the grading. There's a lecture on it. That's, I think, the only reason I feel uh, comfortable asking this question at all. Um, yeah. All right. So let me, I think this is going to be the quicker one to do because as long as I remember the Rayleigh criterion, it's just a matter of plugging in numbers there. So let me, I, I remember the Rayleigh criterion, the minimum. Um, is 1.22 times the wavelength div divided by the, the diameter of the aperture. That's the Rayleigh criterion. And um, yeah, so I need to first work out the minimum angle, then given the, the distance to the double star system, I can, so the, the separation delta x that we can resolve will be the distance times the theta mean that kind of comes from the definition of radian, arc length. Um, so let me plug in the numbers. Uh, I need uh, the, the minimum angular separation that I can still resolve, which would be uh, 1.22 times the wavelength, um, the visible, so 550 nanometer, uh, 550 times 10 to the power of minus nine, um, divided by the diameter uh, 250 centimeters, so that's 2.5 meters. I'm doing all the calculations in basic SI units. So equals, that's the minimum angular separation in radians, multiply that with the distance, one light year is approximately 10 to the 16 meters, so it should be 12, uh, so times 12 times 10 to the 16 meters is equal to, okay, uh, so this should be 10 to the 10, so 3.2 times 10 to the 10, and that is one of the choices. If you don't see the exact choice, you know, choose the closest one. All right, am I? Okay, I'm going to explain even less because I think I have two questions in two minutes. Um, if I don't cut out with explanations, I might not have the time to finish them. So it's going to write the stuff I need to write to, for me to do the calculation. So. It up, but not so much that I make mistakes. I knew that. Oh. I think I also knew that. All right. I got one more question and 
it's there. In one minute. All right. Angular separation, okay. Oh, I think uh, I shouldn't have erased it. So from uh, to neighboring, so dot uh, theta. I think I can use a small angle uh, uh, approximation. So delta theta should be lambda over, between neighbors, uh, should be lambda over d. Radio, so 3.9 million radian. Okay. All right. So let me do this. I'm just going to save progress to make sure I don't uh, lose my last to enter the thing. And let me show you what happens when the time runs out. It'll just kick you out. So because of this question one, I might, um, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I might, um, actually get one wrong. Um, and even if I get it right, I think I should go back and fix it. This is a super ambiguous thing. So, yeah. I So uh, this is what you're going to see. When you review work, you will find that um, the system doesn't tell you which questions you got right. And uh, that's uh, quite intentional. <laughs> and uh, especially, you know, here, my suspicion is it was this question. And I think it is not threw me off. Um, either threw me off when I was programming in the question or when I was answering that. Either way. Um, so <laughs> let me just, oh, so this is what you should do. You know, open this so that you have it available after you're done. And now that I'm done with the thing, I'm not under time limit, I'll say, um, I'll, I'll just briefly explain. Uh, the double negative is a super confusing could you clarify and you know of course i can't uh, see and address this while you are taking the assessment but what i can do is uh let me show you i can let me just open up my open math and i'll log in as my instructor account and i can show you oh this is how i get these questions and i can see uh, what that looks like and that was the question I missed. And really here the issue is that um, this question is misprogrammed. So let me fix that. I can actually edit it. Um, oh, wow, that is a bad. Um, I think that this is a question that I normally use for my physics 10. Um, Oh, wow. When the light strikes the glass in one medium and exits the glass in. Oh. It's. Consider. <laughs> uh, I think this answer is right. Um. I do think, uh, um, let me do it this way. Uh, I'm gonna leave a note for someone else who might be using this question. Um, expanded the uh, first sentence of a question, so it is not as tricky. Consider a glass pane uh, that may be separating uh, um, uh, glass pane that is separating two medium that may, may be different, uh, i.e., wait, no, e.g., um, air and water. Um, or not, e.g. Um, air and 
there. Because um, in my mind, I just went to that uh, directly, and I think a question stating that there's a possibility will help. They may they separate to medium that may be different or not. And yeah, then I would have read the choices more carefully and realized that this would have been the correct choice. It went. Not, yeah, not perpendicular, sorry. Um, oh, then I have to, okay. And specified that correct choice as entering not. Uh, thing, so I've been using this particular question for quite some time and no one's brought up. And you know, this is the kind of question where I would have loved for someone to have brought up the issue so that um, so that I could do the fix that I'm doing now, you know, two years ago instead of now. Uh, and the light strikes a glass in one medium, light like, um, strikes a glass. Uh, I'm gonna uh, borrow this uh, um, uh, wording when the, so when it enters, when it, it enters, not uh, per perpendicular. And I think I should actually not perpendicular to the surface of the blessing on medium, such as air, and access the glassing on other medium, such as water. Um, and actually, I should do an angle. Yeah, on one side, not. Uh, whenever I'm negating, I like to emphasize it because the negation words are easy to miss when you're skinning the question. Not the same. When it enters, not perpendicular. Yeah. And when it enters perpendicular, it is the same. Okay. So, and so this is one fix that, uh, you know, on issues like this, uh, I own many of the, well, actually all the questions that we use, so I can do fixes like this. And, and I'm adding this note for other teachers who may be using it. That's what this note is about. Doesn't matter to you guys. And depending on how serious the issue is, I might adjust the scores. That's the kind of thing that I can do. Um, if I feel like it, uh, you know, it's a tricky question, but not so tricky, then I might not adjust the score. Um, that's sort of up to my discretion. <laughs> um, now, in this particular case, I think the test student will see the adjusted score. Um, yeah, and uh, especially in cases where I adjust the score, I would you know reply to you saying, hey, this question was worded uh, in a different way than how it appears now. <laughs> and uh, because it was too tricky before, I adjust the score for you. Um, so yeah, but that's how multiple choice works. And let me actually demonstrate one more. So uh, this is uh, kind of the logistical side of this, which is um, you can see here when I, so, you know, I had the three tries and let's say I wasn't happy with the 90%. So I want to retake it. When I retake it, what you will see is that um, the questions are different. That's uh, what it means um, when it says, um, um, I think it should say, yeah, questions are re-randomized with each attempt. And this is how the system re-randomizes. I'm just going to let the time run out and it'll test this one to get 0%, but the system will count the highest score, so it's fine. <laughs> um, so this is how it's set up. I can show you that um, how the question pool looks like. So um, you are going to get 10 questions, but the system has more than 10 questions. Uh, for the first group of three questions that you will see, they come from a pool of 27 questions. Uh, some of the questions are written specifically for this class. Those are what I think are harder questions. And some of them are, come from my physics 10 uh, questions and you know, sometimes they are harder than they are intended to be, <laughs> as you saw in the question one. Um, and 
Yeah. So, you know, if you see tricky wording like that, let me know uh, in the exact same way you saw me demonstrate and I'll address it. Um, so that's the first three questions. Next the three questions, they come from a group of 22 questions. Uh, the next two questions, they come from a group of 12 questions. So here, you know, you get one in six chance of uh, seeing the same question twice. But um, you can see that, so, we use this larger question pool uh, mainly so that this uh, makes it possible, um, feasible for me to do what I do, which is that I'm letting you take this with uh, just a simple deadline of, you know, uh, Monday. And uh, you don't all have to take it at the same time because uh, the chances of any two of you getting exact the same 10 questions, even on the three different attempts, it's practically zero. So, um, so I don't have any like embargoes on whether these questions can be shared or not. Um, I do say, you know, it is open book. So any resources that you have available within the context of the course, you can use it during the assessment. And I do mean no outside help. So, you know, before you start your attempt, if you want to consult with your friends and help you study, then that's perfectly fine. That's a part of what this whole question pool deal is that you can, and part of the whole point of me showing you these questions, you can see, oh, you might get these questions and study ahead of time. I'm fine with you doing that. Um, but while you are taking the assessment, you cannot consult anybody. Um, you cannot, uh, that's what no outside help means. You cannot consult any tutors <laughs> and you cannot, cons you should not be consulting any uh, other internet resources either. So, um, but you know, before you start, you can have as much tutoring as you want. Um, it's just that once you start that no outside help, that's part of the rule that was part of the honor code. So I think that's enough on the multiple choice. Uh, let me pause briefly for any questions. Not seeing any. <laughs> I'm gonna move on to the free form. So um, with the free form questions, you are given 20 minutes for each question. And uh, it is still a tight amount of time. It's probably not quite as tight as it was for the multiple cho choice. But even so, it is tight enough that um, I would, uh, you know, <laughs> kind of prepare for everything, you know, make sure that you can basically use all of 20 minutes on getting an acceptable answer into the system. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, the work that you will be attaching, you can attach it after the time limit has run out. So uh, that's what this is getting at. So I, um, so you, as you'll see me demonstrate, I wouldn't use any part of the 20 minutes in organizing the work, you know, do that after you've submitted and, um, and add the work afterwards. Uh, there's no time limit on how long you can take to add work. The only time limit is uh, you should add the work before I start grading. So, um, so let me do that. So it comes in two parts. It's because the, the question posed for the free form has been uh, split into the parts that address the geometric optics mostly and the part that addresses the, the wave optics. And I will admit that the question pool for the free form isn't as large as multiple choice. Uh, I'm hoping to build it up more over time. But um, so, you know, <laughs> this one, I'm going to show you only one attempt and I'm not going to show you how many questions I'm having in the poll. I'll just say that it's fewer than on, in relative terms. It's fewer than how many we have on multiple choice. So some of you might see the same question as your classmate. That's fine. Um, um, as long as you don't have the assurance that you will have the same question and you have only one attempt. That's part of one uh, one of the reasons why you have only one attempt so that people can do question shopping <laughs> where if you don't like the question you got then you do another attempt and I don't want that. That's why you have only one attempt. So let me do that one attempt for the test student and see what that looks like. I, I don't know what test student is gonna get. Uh, and uh, it, uh, I think this is the question I've nicknamed uh, two lens analysis. And uh, I remember this as being a particularly long question, so I'll be quick about 
<laughs> doing this. Okay, consider an arrangement of a converging lens, okay, of some focal length f, f1, uh, who's gonna say this is f1, and a diverging lens of focal length, uh, my, okay, so uh, and d is greater than, yeah. So let me draw the diverging lens. I do recommend the drawing figures as a matter of just a good problem solving practice and uh, making sure you understand what the question is asking about and all that. Um, okay. Yeah, and this um, conversion lens is stronger than the, uh, I didn't draw it to scale, but I will note that F1 is less than F2. Um, two lenses at a substantial distance. Yeah, so this is my distance D. Um, yeah, so arrange so that the commercial length is the location up. So this is my x is equal to zero. Diverging length, yeah. So this is my plus x direction. Um, okay, yeah. And the one limitation of this system is it you can only enter text tensors here. That's one of the reasons there's an add work feature at the end so that I can have people add the diagrams and all that. So, um, this, so part A says, consider an object placed at the location. Okay, uh, so I'm just gonna draw it here, but uh, kind of far enough away, but this is supposed to be uh, 3F1, or X is equal to minus 3F1. So that the light from the object will first, yeah, first go through the conversion lens and then the diverging lens. Uh, let me do a brief uh, ray diagram just so that I have some intuitive sense of uh, what's gonna happen. So, uh, yeah, so it looks like it'll. Oh, sorry, I'm freehanding. This is so difficult. Oh. All right, so it, I'll form a real image. Some air here, maybe. It's possibly inside the focal length of the diverging lens, if in case that's relevant. So this will now form a, a image through this. And if I continue to do the ray tracing, so okay. So uh, this will be where the virtual image due to this diverging lens forms. So. Um, so that's the ray tracing, just to me trying to make sure that I understand the setup. Uh, find the location of the image being formed by the converging lens. And, oh, okay, so I need to answer this part, uh, the stuff relating to this uh, image here. So for actually getting an answer, I won't use the diagram. Again, it's not to scale. But what I can do and should do is I should use the lens equation. I have the thin lens equation, uh, which... Uh, tells me the relationship between the object distance and the image distance and the focal length. And I think I'm given the object distance. So when they tell me the this is the position of the object, that's not the object distance, that is, uh, so I need to work out, is this a real object? Yes, so my DO is positive, so my DO is 3F1. Image distance, I need to work it out. I know, well, F1, I'm trained that it's given. So with that, I'm gonna do a little bit of algebra. So solve this for DI. Um, I'm just gonna do that in my head, which comes down to me just recalling a formula that I have written down so many times that I have it memorized. <laughs> but um, you can, in the interest of time, I'm just gonna, yeah do that in my head <laughs> and then plug in the values. So DO is 3F1, so I have 3F1 squared. On the denominator, I factoring out F1, I have 3 minus 1, so 2, I have 2F1. Okay, so uh, my image distance is positive, 3 halves F1. Okay, um, find the location, of, okay. So the location of the image will be uh, X is equal to 3 three halves times F1. Uh, I think that's it. And uh, you know, and all this is manually graded. So if whether you enter it as F1 or F underscore one, doesn't really matter. I think I got into habit of not putting subscripts because when you're programming, this is a much easier variable to work with. Um, 
and then uh, C attach the Oracle for diagram, lens equation, etc. Um, so the purpose of this reel is to for me to be able to separate, you know, what was worked out um, within the time limit. So, um, it, so I do recommend that uh, after the time limit, you do kind of organize. You are allowed to change this, you know, organize it, make it so that uh, you have a better confidence that I will be able to understand it. So part B, okay, same set of all, find where the final image through the diverging lens appears to be and give the, okay. So I need, to, so for this analysis, I'm treating this as my object and for this second lens and then working this through. So the lens equation remains the same. What I need to be careful is working out the object distance. So one over the O plus one over the I is equal to one over minus F2. Um, and the object distance should be this distance here. That's the object distance. So the image distance, oh, sorry. This should have been, oh wait, that is right. Sorry, I'm confusing myself. This is the, uh, so this image distance from above, that's telling me this distance here. So this is one of the purposes for the diagram. I can kind of see from the diagram that this di plus this do two uh, should be equal to this uh, total distance between the lenses. So I'm gonna go write that down. So the um, so total distance between the lenses is the di that I worked out three halves f one plus the um, the do two two. To, so that I don't confuse my stuff. Um, yeah, and it looks like so. Um, so I need to solve this for do two. My do two will be total distance minus three halves f one. So this is all in terms of known quantities. So I'm gonna treat this as known, and do the rest of the work for di two uh, uh, in terms of all these other known quantities and um, doing the algebra in my head, which again, as I admitted, is me just recalling the formula <laughs> I've written down so many times that I have it memorized. <laughs> um, but let me write it down anyway. U2 minus minus F2. All right, there's some simplifications. These cancel out. So, so yeah, I'm gonna get an overall negative answer, which is what I was expecting because the diverging lens is going to form a virtual image. Um, so it would be minus EO2 times F2 over um, EO2 plus F2. And at this point, I guess you do have some choice. You can choose to plug this in into your expression so that you can uh, put in an answer all in terms of the known quantities. That's possible, doable. What I would recommend instead, or not instead, or what I would say is acceptable as well, is as long as you are defining your variables, you can write your answer in terms of that defined variable. So you could say define do2 is equal to d minus 3 half. This basically saves on some writing. You are perfectly allowed to do that. Now, if you have said x is equal to minus do2 times f2 over do2 plus f2, that would be wrong, partly. Not because um, the answer, the, the work here is wrong, or not because you're using do2, not because of that, but because you're putting in the image distance for what should be the x position. So I need to go back up and figure out the, okay, given this image distance, what is my x position? So, oh, my x position, whatever this is gonna be, it should be the distance minus the absolute value of the image distance. So, so what this should be, is, so that's the image distance. Um, so the x position should be d plus the image distance with the negative sign included. So that would be correct. So yeah, you can enter it that way and same deal. See how the work for diagram, lens equation, etc. Uh, again, my goal is to separate out what was done within the time limit and uh, in terms of the organizing work, you are allowed to do it after the time limit. And that's partly the reason, the way I justify 
such a tight time limit of 20 minutes. You can see even me, uh, while I'm explaining, you know, I tend to do the rest without explaining because I only have nine minutes. Um, yeah, what is the linear magnification of this arrangement? Uh, yeah. So I'm kind of recalling the magnification formulas. For each stage of this, the linear magnification is minus di over do. That's the formula you should be using. And um, it's, uh, yeah, so this is for the entire arrangement. So you have to do it in two steps. Um, so the overall magnification and total should be basically magnification of the first stage times the magnification of the second stage. So, um, so magnification of the first stage is, oh, I think I have those in terms of, yeah, di is that. Um, so minus three halves, uh, uh, three halves F1 divided by, I think I remember the object distance, uh, three F1. Um, and okay, three is cancel. Okay, so the first stage had the magnification of one half. So it's shrunk rather than magnifying. And the second stage has that image distance. And I don't know how much it will simplify. Let me just first write it out and say d o 2 times F2 over d o 2 plus F2. That's the image distance times one over the object distance. Uh, oh, I can just write out d o 2 because uh, I think it's going to cancel. d o 2 yeah. It'll cancel that and uh, minus F2 over DO2 plus F2. And I think I'm going to leave the final answer in terms of this. So the overall magnification should be product of this uh, M1 times M2 minus signs with the, um, I think I, oh, there's the minus sign. So. This minus shine should have canceled that. <laughs> so it's overall negative magnification. Um, I think, yeah, yeah, and I'll just be safe and include it. So this is the magnification of first stage times the magnification of second stage, F2 over U2 plus F2. So yeah, let me just write that out. The total magnification is equal to minus uh, F1 divided by 2 times F2 divided by DO2 plus F2. And I guess if you're answering this way, you would be doing me a favor if you um, basically, so, you know, it says in terms of given quantities, these, and I am using DO2, so I should define DO2 in terms of the given quantities, which was here. So I say DO2 is D minus uh, 3 over 2 times F1. So we do this, all this is in terms of the given quantities. Um, and it, all this is doing is it's saving you some writing work here and all that is a lot. Uh, what I would ask for is please define your, any variables that you are using that I haven't already spelled out as a, a known quantities. So, all right. Um, consider your work in parts A and B, where you find the location of the first image and uh, describe and explain logistic. Um, oh, oh, it's talking, it goes to whether I'm forming a real image or a virtual image. So, okay. Um, and here, I don't think I need to do any work here because it's a conceptual thing. I more or less see, want to see this. So I have to say, okay. Um, I have to say, um, so for one, the converging lens forms a real image. So a screen placed at the location of image one will show uh, the sharply focused image. Um, part two. Um, so um, the, the, this image serving as an object for this lens, it is a real object. I think I, it, you know, watch the lecture on sign conventions. Um, but the image it's forming, it's a virtual image in that um, at this location, no real light rays actually crossed. 
you know, this light ray appears to come from here, but it doesn't actually cross there. This right light ray does come from here, but it's not forming a sharp focus with other light rays here, like not literally. Um, so, so it's a virtual image. So what I would say is that the screen placed at the location of image two does not show a sharply focused image because the diverging lens forms a virtual image in this arrangement. Uh, there are other arrangements where you um, you can form a real image with a diverging lens, but it, it, um, not this setup. Um, so you are welcome to submit an end. You are welcome to add work here. Um, what I will warn you is that when this time runs out, it'll kick you out and you may lose the work you've been typing. So I would almost rather just submit an end and keep working on the work later. Um, in fact, if uh, your work involves any kind of substantial work, don't spend time typing them here because uh, you might get kicked out. Sometimes you get kicked out when the, the due date comes around. Um, you should do work on an external program and then uh, copy it over here. So, so what I'm gonna do is, so let me submit an end just to show you that the attach work thing is still available afterwards. Oh yeah, you can do it after you've done it. Oh, so let me actually do that here. I'm gonna attach this work here. Uh, let me do it this way. I'm gonna do this as a screenshot. So take the screenshot here and I'm just doing paste. Um, this uh, uh, control V or edit paste stuff. Oh, sorry. Oh, I see. Um, the the edit paste stuff it does uh, um, it works with the clip it does it works with the images um, you can paste from clipboard of images uh, it doesn't work with the files you can attach uh, attach a file so so let me for this go around let me just attach images and you know whatever you want to do is fine you can also type your work in but I feel like that's uh, often uh, more work than uh, unloading a photo of or pasting in a photo of your work. So a uh, photo of your work, which um, I might even recommend that you do, on, do it on paper because uh, whatever you do on computer usually takes longer. So while you're taking the assessment, if you are doing something like this, that might actually take longer than just scratching it out on paper. You should take time to organize it. Like right now, I'm basically attaching my scratch work. And um, I mean, you can do that, but that could result in you losing some points if I don't understand what it is you're trying to do. So, um, yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm just canceling out that too. And yeah, here I think something happened. Uh, uh, something moved this cross here. So, okay. <laughs> um, yeah. And as you can see here, after I've done all the submission, this uh, work, it should still be editable. Oh, uh, I guess editable not here. But when I refresh this page, it'll, yeah. So when I, access the work screen through here, I can actually still change it. Answers, I can't. It's uh, locked in after the 20 minute time limit, but the work I can still change. So maybe I uh, don't like how it looks in, in image form. So maybe I say, okay, I don't wanna do it this way. Let me just attach a PDF because uh, this thing actually lets me export a PDF. So I can just uh, file, print, into PDF, desktop, uh, work. That seems right-ish. Yeah, so I can attach that instead. Um, attach file, upload. Uh, so you can do that too. Um, and uh, so the system will timestamp your work, uh, but again, there's no time limit for the work. Uh, this, uh, to me, the be best, uh, greatest uh, utility for me is uh, it let, uh, 
so so if someone somehow changes their work after I've graded it, then it lets me know. Because uh, as long as it's before I grade it, you know, you can change your work all you want. It doesn't matter to me. Um, yeah. Okay. I think that's it for this question. Um, so we have about 10 minutes remaining. I think it's enough to at least to get a good start and a demonstration of the next uh, free form kind assessment just so that you can kind of see the... So you you can, you could see that this question covered the geometric optics, and you will see with the next question that it uh, addresses physical optics. So um, so I think ten minutes is enough to at least to get some start on that, even if I don't actually finish everything. So uh, if there aren't uh, particular questions people and you know once i start this i'll probably basically run out of time to address any additional questions so with that brief pause out of the way not seeing any questions let me just get started on this part and oh also i guess while you're taking the free form assessment if you get the question that i just did um okay you got lucky <laughs> that's fine i'm happy with the people getting lucky occasionally as long as you don't have an assurance that the question you get is something that you had uh, so the, i think that element of uncertainty is enough so so let me start on this again i don't know what question has the student will get uh okay that seems reasonable i think uh yeah okay okay um yeah, this is uh one of those so uh, where these questions come from they come from my past uh, midterm exams and uh, some of the questions are i don't know if they are the best questions uh, for this kind of format where uh, the answers you put in here are a bit limited and um, a lot of what you attach is uh, what you have access to after time limit um so yeah, is you know show that outgoing angles for which line expand. So and and I think here I give you the answer basically so that if people put it in something like this, I can say I mean you know even if you organized a little bit, I can say well you, that was in the question. So you know can you demonstrate to me that you've you can contribute something that wasn't already provided in the question. And this is the kind of question where it's basically asking you to reproduce the steps that are um, that you see in the textbook but um, so it is open book um, exam which means uh, you are allowed to look at your textbook all that is built into the expectation you you are allowed to look at the textbook and this is really one of the reasons for the time limit because um, if you spend a lot of time reading through your textbook while you are <laughs> trying to do this assessment, um, uh, then you know you'll run out of time. <laughs> um, now, having said that, um, okay, so I think it's basically the derivations here. Wait, does your textbook not do the derivation for this thing? Um, maybe, maybe not. So, um, so for this particular question, I guess there's nothing you can actually just copy and paste. Um, so this figure actually uh, includes a lot of the arguments you would be making. Um, oh yeah. So, 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 so you are allowed to see all this while you're in the assessment. Again, that's what open book means. But even on open book assessments, um, the answers you turn in, the, the work you turn in has to be your own work, which means if you do something like this, I'll be, as I'm grading it, I'll look at it and say, hey, that's basically the textbook. Could you please submit your own work? <laughs> um, probably won't go as far as saying that's uh, cheating because, eh, <laughs> Once the uh, academic dishonesty gets involved, it's a whole thing that I would rather not deal with. But you also won't get too uh, too much credit for basically copying what's in the textbook because I know you have access to the textbook. Uh, I don't want to see uh, your reasoning process. I want to see explanations in your own words. So uh, model answer for this part A would be something like um, 
Okay, constructively interferes are given by that. So thinking back to the lecture that I have watched, again, <laughs> I've also given for me, but imagining the test, test student who have seen the lectures, the test student will remember, okay, constructive uh, interference it means um, the, the phase difference, delta V is equal to some integer multiple of two pi. Uh, so, you know, whole cycles difference. Um, the phase difference comes from the path length difference. Looking at the geometry, uh, that would be this geometry here. I might draw some figures here that's in the textbook. <laughs> um, the, the path length difference there is... Um, Delta X path length difference is equal to the hypotenuse. The, uh, let me draw some of these figures um, so that I'm not just gesturing with the mouse. Uh, so it's a, this is geometry I'm thinking of. Drop down a perpendicular line. It's this right triangle that gives you the geometry stuff to figure out this delta X here. Um, so the delta X is equal to uh, hypotenuse times sine of, um, and you need to work out that this is a theta as well, sine of theta, um, the path length uh, difference leads to phase difference in this way. Um, uh, delta V is equal to the, um, the Path length, and let me just uh, clear the annotation. The path length difference um, in units of wavelength, lambda, uh, but that's the kind of phase difference in cycles. I need it in units of radian, or radian, so times two pi, that's the phase difference. So we say, okay, um, this whole expression here is equal to the condition that I set outside before for um, the constructive interference. I did a copy. Um, so kind of looking at these expressions here, two pi's cancel, I have, um, so I get uh, something like, wait, delta x, that's not right, sorry. Um, Oh, yeah, sorry, I copied all over the wrong thing. This is what I should have copied over. Oh. So this is the, um, or, oh, 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 okay, yeah. So where I have delta x, this should have been in, because <laughs> d sine theta, that is delta x, okay. So let me have that, and okay. Two pi's cancel, so I have d sine theta over lambda on the left-hand side, move the lambda over to the right-hand side, so I have the sine theta is equal to n times lambda. Two pi is canceled out. Oh, um, use m for better convention. Um, so how much of the detail? So here, this is um, a bit of an over-inclusion. Typing all this out takes time. You can kind of say I'm already kind of behind in time. So um, if you are instead writing this out mostly on paper, and you just want to sketch out, like maybe um, write down the equations line by line without maybe without having a narrative explanation, that's fine. Um, really the biggest um, kind of the separation role of answers versus work is that answer tells me uh, what you figured out within the time limit. So give me enough of the breadcrumbs to connect the dots. And in your attached work, you can expand this a lot more. Um, so here I might say, okay, uh, same reasoning as above, except that the phase difference uh, relationship is um, delta V is equal to uh, N times V, where N is up. And you can work through the rest. And uh, in going through the rest, uh, um, you might have to, in order to say that n is odd, you might have m is e n is equal to uh, two times m plus one, where m is any integer. Uh, this ensures that the the integer n is odd. And in fact, going through the rest, you 
uh, with this you can like this is uh, but it ends up being <laughs> when you do that now here i might actually write up a little more to kind of show a couple more equations that lead to this um uh, in the attached work case where you would fully fill it out um Derive an expression for the intensity of the interference pattern on the projection screen as a function of outgoing angle. Yeah. Um, so this, um, it's basically asking you to kind of, again, I, I will express my, um, uh, uh, I'm probably in the wrong. Oh, wait, I need, okay, good. Uh, uh, test center doesn't have access to dashboard. Um, so I do recommend that you review lectures before um, test center doesn't. Okay, I'm gonna just do this so that let me just save work. Okay, it's already saved. <laughs> uh, leave test uh, So, you know, you should uh, review your work before, uh, review lectures, uh, study before you start. And uh, these parts of the questions, they are basically asking you to reproduce um, some of the derivations that are done here. And I think the easiest uh, version of the derivation to reproduce is the one where I use complex exponentials. Um, so I have analysis of double cell interference with the complex exponentials. There is um, uh, there's a 20 minute lecture that does that. <laughs> um, I don't have 20 minutes now to reproduce this. So I'm not gonna do that. And you also won't really have um, time within the assessment to watch through this uh, within that the 20 minutes total of the thing to do that. But the idea is that if you've watched and all the things I'm doing here made a sense, then you had the time to uh, kind of absorb all this and to reproduce this on the um, assessment, you should be able to do that in five minutes. So, and uh, because you are limited to typing, you know, um, just type out enough of portions of something that comes from this to demonstrate that you understood the attached, uh, demonstrate that you understood, and two, that you typed it in during the time limit. Um, so that, that for that, and this is also, oh wait, this is conceptual. So, oh, I can say this, um, intensity minima um, won't be completely dark uh, because um, uh, the cancellation won't be 100%. Oh, yeah. leave that there. Okay, submit and end. Um, <laughs> oh, by the way, don't do what I'm doing now, which is I'm just leaving this blank now. Anything that you leave blank that will severely limit how much credit I can give you. Because uh, basically, if this is blank, I don't have anything to anchor uh, what you are turning in your work as. So you choose to put in something so that as I'm grading it and um, as I look at your work, I can kind of try to figure out which part of the work is associated with um, the answer you submitted within the time limit. And if uh, you somehow made a substantial modifications to the work, which again, I, I'm not prohibiting because um, it's hard to say both encourage you to organize your work while prohibiting addition of more material. So, but if you leave it blank, I basically have to assume that everything in the attached work was done after the time limit, which limits how much credit I can give you. Uh, depending on the quality of work I see, I might not be giving zero, but um, uh, it makes my job a lot, makes uh, the decision process for me a lot easier if I see something here so that I can try to figure out which part of the work is from within the time limit. So, so yeah, I think that's uh, enough. And uh, just a uh, uh, kind of warning, <laughs> uh, you are going to see this thing where it says, oh, you got, uh, you got, um, wait, oh wait, I'm out of the test student mode. So let me go back to test the student. Um, you know, it'll say 0% score. Um, I, it, that's the score that um, uh, my open math automatically gives to any question that's manually graded. Uh, I need to go in, manually grade it, 
Um, if you see zero percent, you can take that as it means I haven't graded it. I almost never give it zeros unless you literally left to all the blanks empty and you attach to no work. Like if you did that, then I might give you a zero. But other than that, you will get at least one out of 10. So, uh, yeah. So I think that's uh, enough um, and out of time. <laughs> so let me stop the recording here unless there are any last minute urgent questions that people here in real time have.